Hi, this is Kim Edwards. We're going to be doing a pendulum today, so we're going to make a rig. So I've got joints in the middle, and a ball up for the end at the far left, and the far right I've got a um, platform. So to create a child-parent hierarchy relationship, what I'm going to get you to do, the easiest way to do this, is collect the child, then select the parent, and then press P on your keyboard, and see in the outline of that makes uh, a hierarchical relationship between the two. So now if I move the parent, the child moves. If I rotate the parent, the child rotates. If I scale the parent, the child scales. <coughs> so I'm going to now I've set that up. I'm going to duplicate the joints a few times. Just press Control D uh, using Snap to move it, and then Shift D to duplicate again with that transform. Then I'll make sure I rename the ge geometry to correspond to the numbers of the controls. Just so I don't get confused, we all know it pays to be neat. And then we'll create parent-child um, hierarchies um, for the rest of the parts as well. Um, you can, as well as selecting the child and then the parent pressing P, you can also use your middle mouse button to select something uh, in the outliner and then holding the middle mouse button down, drag it onto the object that you want to be the parent. But really the easiest way in it's an easy shortcut to remember P, the parent, um, is to press um, select the child then the parent object and press P. So you can see here I've now got all of the joints, um, uh, the controls I've also put into a hierarchy that we can see in the outliner. And we'll add the, um, the uh, platform to be the parent of everything and the ball to be at the end of the hierarchy, so the last one in the hierarchy. And then that should be something that we can animate. But to make it animating easier, what we're going to do is we only want these controls to be for rotation. So we're going to lock the translate and scale um, options in the attribute editor <coughs> for the controls, which will mean when the animator selects it and they may have the move or scale tool on, it'll be grayed out. So they'll get a pretty quick uh, idea that, look, you should only use these for rotating the rig. <clears throat> so just going through and um, locking just by right clicking in the attribute editor choosing lock selected the, the attributes that we don't want to have on So um, you probably would have seen a few pendulum animations um, around traps. Um, they're good because they let you look at um, um, sort of uh, overlapping action, I suppose, where you have the momentum from your main object and then, you know, a slow kind of, as it goes down the hierarchy, um, uh, effect on those below. I'm using the display layers over in the um, channel layer editor um, to put the geometry in a geometry layer and then if you click on the checkbox next to the visibility one, the second checkbox there, you can freeze them um, so that you won't be able to select it. You can see here I've just opened up the hypergraph hierarchy which um, <clears throat> is another way of representing hierarchies um, as well as the outliner and showing relationships between things. So the display layers is a good way of, of um, you can select objects, so you just want to create a display layer, you right click and add selected objects to it. But you can also right click it and select objects that are in there as well. So we'll have a display layer for geometry and also a display layer for controls just so um, people can use it to select things and optionally um, freeze things um, when they're trying to animate. So this is a pretty simple rig. Um, that should be fun to animate once we've finished it. Just making sure I label everything correctly. Obviously also, I've, when I've constructed the pieces that you're using, I've deliberately put the pivot point, the transformation point, 
uh, anchor point in some programs in the right spot. So we all know the the toggle for turning on edit pivot point is D with the move tool on. Alternatively, if you want to put it on permanently, you can just press uh, you can press in the insert key. So <clears throat> that's the hierarchy almost complete. Just make the platform control the uh, master controller and hero controller for everything. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll create a um, another display layer just for the controls. If you because it doesn't show you what's in there, you can open up the relationship editor display layers and choose the layer that you're curious about and it'll show you what's highlighted as in what's within it. Um, it'd be nice to get some other um, way of seeing what's in there, perhaps in the display layers. It's, but that's what we've got as an option at the moment. So just selecting all the um, controls now and putting them in their own little display layer. Um, <clears throat> One of the reasons for using um, nerves curves for controls um, is also that at the top um, where we toggle you know, snap to grid and so forth, there's also little symbols like a plus symbol, a bone symbol, curve symbol, uh, looks like a polygon plane symbol. Those you can toggle on and off to um, prevent selecting certain objects. So you can um, turn off select, being able to select geometry and surfaces. Um, and there, thereby um, leave everything, you know, unfrozen, but you will only be able to select the controls. So just a quick save there and ready to do some animation. So to animate something, you just select the attribute you want to animate um, in the attribute, um, at the channel box and um, right click and key selected. And then if you've got auto key on, which is the bottom right of the my viewport, the little key symbol that's highlighted red. If you then change that attribute, so if you've moved, for example, but X here, just move the X attribute, it'll then set another keyframe automatically once you've set that initial keyframe. You can also, if you just press S on the keyboard with an object selected, it'll set a, um, a transformation key for everything for translate, rotation and scale. So I've set in a, an X key frame, frame one, and another one on frame 50. So the next thing I'll probably do is I just want to have a, another key where the, um, another key frame where the um, pendulum is kind of arced back um, as it tries to catch up with the, uh, the platform moving right. So I'll just rotate those and then set a key for rotation. Z rotation in this case for them. So you don't need to use exact values. I usually have snap um, uh, snaps on for my rotation, so it snaps in increments, just make things a little bit easier to go back. Um, so I'm just setting keyframes for those and then I'll put them back at zero on the Z rotation at frame one. So doing this at frame 25, uh, back at frame one. If you need to move keys around, you can do that just by um, pressing shift and um, left mouse clicking on the keyframe that you're interested in and it'll highlight it. You can use that to move it around. You can also um, can drag that highlight so it selects multiple keyframes um, and you can also scale those keys just in that timeline view. Um, we're just doing a little test animation at the moment but once you get animating quite a bit you'll also be working in the graph editor which shows you um, spline like curves that represent the um, the um, uh, in between keys that the computer is doing um, for you uh, in a graph, which we'll have a look at um, briefly in a minute. So now I'm just doing another um, keyframe there, um, just 
so that after the um, pendulum arcs forward, it's also going to go back. But it's going to be unnatural if it just stops there. We're going to have to have another one where rather than being straight, it's just counter going, going back. It's curving backwards again as it settles back to a neutral kind of position based on the weight of that ball at the end, just settling down after the, the main thrust the pendulum has stopped moving. So we'll probably have one more after that. And um, then what we'll do is we'll offset the motion so that, you know, the, the, the thing that's happening first, which is the platform, um, affects the, the first joint. And then the second joint, there's a little bit of a delay, just a small delay before it gets moved. And then a small delay before the third joint gets moved. So we've got a bit of offset in the action and that will smooth things out a bit. So that's almost settled. Now, I'll just do one more. One more breakdown in the opposite direction. That's looking reasonably good. So over a window in the graph editor, which I've opened now, we can see it's showing me the curves that are being animated. So the rotate Z, and now I'm just going to grab those and I'm going to offset them. So if you hold the middle mouse button down and press shift and then drag left and right, it'll keep, it'll just move it on the X axis, which is the frame number and the Y axis is the value. So I don't want to change the rotation values. So I'm going to be pressing alt and uh, using middle mouse with shift just to constrain the movement um, to just offsetting the frames. So you can use the move tool, just W, um, and the scale tool inside of the graph editor. And they can move and scale the keys around. And you can see the effect that that has on the motion. So <clears throat> rigging is all about making something for you to be able to animate. This is a simple rig, and we're just testing it by doing a bit of animation on it. Having done that, I'd probably say that, you know, if it was just going to be animated like this, then you might want to actually lock um, the rotation controls for the joints just to be on the Z axis, so you couldn't rotate it on the other axis. Uh, but I think, you know, that's a good introduction to parent-child hierarchies, selecting the child and the parent, pressing P, um, and animating by right-clicking, setting a keyframe, having auto key on, moving in the timeline, and changing that value to set other keys, as well as offsetting action. All right, I hope that was useful. Um, Kim Edwards, thanks for watching.